This example demonstrates how to use aggregates, the built-in aggregates that are static methods on all the collections. Now, this is the Acme Sales uh, demonstration that we've been using throughout some of the examples. And it has the customer employee, customer order, essentially the Northwind database. So we've already generated this. So we're going to go over to a test application and look at some examples of how to uh, use aggregates. Now, the aggregates are just like they are in SQL Server, pretty much. You have distinct, count, min, max, sum. Uh, so what you can do here is the get count uh, static method on the customer's collection, every collection for that matter, is actually overloaded multiple times to return back uh, an integer, the number of items. If you look at the IntelliSense, we can see there's three overloads for this one, which has the where clause. It has two where clauses because this is actually an overloaded table. This is an inherited table. This table inherits from system user. So there's actually a get count for system user and a get count for uh, a customer collection. There's also uh, a parameterless get count, which will actually return the count of every single object in the database. Now, we can also look at something with a little more complexity added to it. This get count essentially is finding all the items inside of the customer database where the first name equals Bunny and the last name equals Einstein. And following the get count, we can expand it a little bit more. And we can actually do dependency walking or, or tying the tables together through joins. So on this count, uh, we're saying uh, for this customer, Look at the order table that's related to this customer and find an order date that is greater than now. So essentially this is interjoining the customer and order table uh, and where the order dot order date is greater than now. So you can actually make this arbitrarily complex. You can walk down multiple dependencies. All the relationships are defined within the model itself. So there's no need to have any type of joining syntax inside of the link. Now another aggregate is min. You have min, max, count, sum, and, and distinct. So from here we can say get min. Now this is the return value is dependent upon what you send in. Right here we're, send, we're saying we want to find the minimum user ID inside of the customer collection. User ID is an integer, so it's going to return a nullable int. The reason it's nullable is because there could be zero items in there. If there's zero items or, or the where syntax uh, the where clause brings back zero items. You don't want to return zero because that's not the minimum. It's just actually null. So the min and max will return nullable of whatever type that you are, are querying. And of course, you can add a more complicated syntax. There is a where expression on there. So you can say user ID and then pass in a where statement like we did up here for the count. And we'll look at one more of the aggregates, which is distinct. If we look at distinct, we'll notice we are going to find the distinct first names for the customer collection. And it's going to return to us an innumerable uh, list of strings. Had this been user ID, it would have been I innumerable of int and so forth. Essentially, whatever uh, GUID, int, string, uh, decimal, whatever the type field that you pass in is going to be the enumerable type list that you get out of it. Now most of these look very simple because there's really no where syntax. So I can come in here and you can pass in where syntax here. So we can actually just copy this from up there and compile it. Compile just fine. So essentially we want to find all the distinct first names that have a related order, at least one order, uh, with an order date greater than now. And that will return to us uh, a list of strings. So we can do distinct, count, sum, min, max. There are an average. There are all your aggregate functions for every collection. This is all generated. 